thank you very much for attending the the moment, and uh, thank you those who are uh, doing this uh, on streaming uh, due to the circumstances. Well, I could thank Mr. Uh, Moronia and the Customer Authorities uh, for all the help in working in this project. I'm going to make a review of this case, the Euro uh, 2004 Hungary, uh, the case 291 plus uh, 15. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to make that review. These are the main topics that uh, we're going to see in, in this case. I think most of you know it, just in case. We're going to talk about the termination of the customer value, DAPS based on the veracity of the declared price, and finally, the declared price lower than the price paid in respect of other transactions related to CPR group. Those are the main issues, main topics that we will see in this, in this case. The main facts, well, uh, there's a request for a preliminary ruling from uh, the Hungarian uh, Court of Justice, who's going to ask the, the, the uh, Court of Justice of the European Union if it is in accordance to the applicable rule, the practice that takes place or that they use in the Hungarian customs authorities. The practice is, when they're using here, they calculate the customs value of goods on the basis of the transaction value of similar goods in case that they consider that the value is abnormal, which means it's lower, in this case, than lower by more than 50%. Okay, that's the case. So let's check if this uh, European Union Court of Justice, Court of the European Union, uh, let's ask for the permanent rule in case to receive, uh, they agree with this practice. Okay. Which is the applicable rule? Well, in, in those days, it was uh, Article 181. Well, in English, A, in Spanish, B, sorry for that. Mm. Uh, nowadays, currently, we don't have a problem with this uh, Article 140 of Commission Implementing Regulation. And we're going to see, we can see, for those that don't know the article, that's what it says. It says, uh, where the customs authorities have different on tabs, uh, they may ask the declarant to supply additional information. In red, you will see that that's what the, the uh, custom authorities ask the declarant, and this is what uh, they provide. They provide the commercial invoice in the first place, they provide a proof of payment, which was a bank certificate, and finally, they were, uh, issued, they were given these authorities the accounting rate. Okay? From that and on, the customs authorities had to decide if. Uh, they agreed or they would change their mind by this information that was provided in the case. Before going to the considerations of the court, we must come back to uh, or, or understand where the article comes from. And this is where it comes from. And this, in, in our opinion, there's a slight difference uh, in the in how the article was postponed and where it comes from, which is the this uh, ministers invite the committee well the so the customer value established under the agreement on implementation of Article 7 of the ATT 1994. Okay, what it says is before making this decision, uh, uh, they uh, there must be a reason for adopting uh, about the truth of or accuracy of this these documents. Okay, and also what it says is it might be given a reasonable opportunity to respond. Okay. So after this, uh, the court it made its approach. The approach, they firstly remind the, the students, first of all with Christophe Lowe, case uh, 116, 12. And uh, well, they confirm that the uh, customer authorities can do that. So. Uh, they can reject the retail price of the goods and not accept the transaction value when those two cases, when after having request additional information from the declarant, the DAP exists, still exists. Okay? Uh, and then that is the case. They still have doubts about the, if that is the real price that was paid by the declarant. The Court of Justice of the European Union considered that um, this practice of the Hungarian customs authorities is, is correct. Uh, due to, the, well, according to the article 181A in English, 
principales que les amo muchísimo. Existen sus profundidades donde el Captain Authority es un gigante de la Party o Fashion World Period to Respond. So, it was given a period to respond and they, they were dubs in order to, to think that it wasn't, it wasn't the real price. Okay, so, the, it was meeting those two requirements, which is uh, the value, the lower, the lower than the usual value, and that uh, the company was given according to the Court of Justice, a reasonable period to respond, and that's what they did. Considerations of the Court of Justice of the European Union, they understand that uh, the, I mean, they understand that the lapse of the cast of the customer authorities must be, uh, should be considered, founded in the current price went over for by more than 50%, and that significant difference is sufficient to justify the dubs of the customs authorities. What do they consider? Well, they consider that customs authorities provided the declarant with the opportunity of uh, giving the documents. In this case, they gave, as we have seen, they gave three documents, so they provide the opportunity, and the authorities check it and didn't find it uh, enough to, to change their mind. Okay? Conclusions of the European, uh, the Court of Justice of the European Union. They conclude that the practice is correct according to the, uh, the old uh, Article 181, the currently Article 140, because there were well founded dubs uh, not to admit the same value, and the interested party was given a reasonable opportunity to clarify such dubs. Okay. So let's go to our final remarks. Santiago, well, is going to be only the the, the first primary remarks, I think uh, that uh, Santiago is going to add something else. So, in, should I say something? Okay. Or? okay. Uh, in our opinion, uh, we don't think that is the best. When I'm reading this, I, I see it's too hard no, to see. But we think that is the worst solution, or maybe not the best one, okay, to, uh, to lower, lower, lower the level a little bit. Because custom authorities never ask. Uh, which was the evidence they were they, they needed because in our opinion these three are more than enough and apart from that we consider that probably council authorities should have given any evidence in order to uh, change or, or not accept the, the values that were given by the record. <laughs> Sorry, we have to change because uh, the person speaking needs to be at the computer, so <laughs> to advance the slides. Okay, I, I'm going to build up on, on what uh, Jorge has explained, uh, the Euro 2004 case, as basis for a discussion, uh, because in the Euro 2004 case, uh, as, as Jorge said, uh, the, uh, the authorities did have doubts about the, the, the price declared by the declarant. But the declarant provided an invoice. The declarant provided a bank certificate, so the amount actually paid to the foreign seller. And the declarant also provided the accounting records. And even with that, the authorities have doubts. But they, they never explained why. Why do you have doubts? On what grounds? Only because the price is very low. Yeah, but is that enough grounds to reject transaction value? Is the fact that the price is low reason enough to reject transaction value? And according to the Court of Justice of the European Union, yes, apparently yes. So uh, the Court of Justice of the European Union thinks, uh, yes, that it's enough grounds to reject transaction value. But uh, I'm going to explain that in my view that is not correct. Uh, first of all, we have advisory opinion to one of the technical committee of customs valuation. Uh, this advisory opinion is about the acceptability of a price below prevailing market prices of identical it's a very early on uh, advisory opinion. It's number two. And in that 
advisory opinion, the technical committee, in very clear terms, says the committee considered this question and concluded that the mere fact, the mere fact that the price is lower than prevailing market prices for identical goods should not cause it to be rejected for the purposes of Article 1, subject, of course, to the provisions of Article 17, which is about inquiries, finding out, making further uh, examination. So the fact that the price is low is not sufficient grounds to reject transaction value. And that is very clearly stated by the technical committee. Bear in mind that in the WTO customs valuation agreement, uniformity is a very important goal, it's a very important aim to be achieved in valuation. So what the technical committee is saying is not binding, it's not legally binding, but because the customs valuation code wants to achieve uniformity, we should pay attention to what the technical committee is saying, unless we have very good reason to depart from this understanding. So, the fact that the price is low is not grounds enough to reject transaction value. Further, we have also case study 12.1, again by the technical committee. And in this case study, the technical committee goes further by saying, it is perfectly acceptable that the seller makes a loss when selling the goods. And that price is still acceptable. Even if the seller makes a loss, the transaction value could still be applied. If the price is bona fides, if they are not cheating, if they are not lying, if they provide reason why we are selling at a price lower than the costs. By the way, we had a, 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 a judgment of the European Court of Justice very recently, the Lifosa case, in which the European Court of Justice agreed, yes, the price can be lower than the costs. In fact, the price can be a negative price, because in Lifosa, the price was negative due to very special circumstances. It was a chemical product that was about to expire, and recycling the product would have been very expensive. So the seller was ready to sell at an extremely, I mean, so low that it was a negative price. So, in a, in a recent case, the European Court of Justice has agreed with this position that uh, the advisory opinion to one concludes that the mere fact that the price is lower than prevailing market prices for identical goods is not sufficient grounds for rejecting all the transaction value. So they recall the previous position and they confirm it. But on top of the view of the technical committee that by itself is very relevant, we also have uh, two cases by uh, the dispute settlement body at the WTO. Uh, the first is the dispute of Colombia indicative prices. In this dispute, uh, what Colombia did was, if you declare a value which is lower than the database values, uh, we impose on you a warranty. You have to provide warranty if you, declare, if you declare a lower price. But in the end, that warranty was final. Because of the procedural rules, it was impossible for the importer to prove otherwise. And the, in the end, what started as a warranty ended up being, uh, you pay extra. You pay the, the amount that corresponds to the database value. Okay, and this, this uh, criteria of Colombia was brought to the WTO by Colombia, and, uh, sorry, by Panama, and Panama prevailed. The, the panel, in this case, decided Colombia was in breach of the customs valuation agreement rules because they were rejecting in practice uh, transaction value with no reason, simply that you declare values lower than database values. And that is no basis to accept uh, the rejection of transaction value. So basically, the legal reasoning could apply to the 
Court of Justice of the European Union in Europe 2004. You are rejecting transaction value because of database values. Uh, in, in the European case, it was 50%, and it was in a specific situation, but the legal reasoning is the same. You are rejecting transaction value based on database values. And Colombia was told this is against the Customs Valuation Code. So maybe, <laughs> maybe we could assume that if the EU were taken to the WTO, maybe we wouldn't get a very positive feedback from them. But there is another case, the case of Thailand, Customs and Fiscal Measures on Cigarettes from the Philippines. Okay, this is the never-ending story. <laughs> the Thailand case began in 2007, 2008, and it's still alive. The, 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 the case is still ongoing with appeals and discussion between Thailand and the Philippines because uh, Thailand said they lost the case, Thailand said they have uh, changed their legislation, but Philippines disagreed and brought Thailand again to the WTO, and you know that uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the WTO was uh, inoperative because they didn't have judges, uh, because the Trump administration was blocking the appointment of new judges. So th it, this is a never ending story because it's, it, it's a case still ongoing. Mm -hmm. but, okay, in the first case, uh, the first case that was appealed and uh, finally decided by the appellate body, what Thailand was doing was they rejected transaction value in transactions between related parties. It was uh, Philip Morris, uh, the, the tobacco company. Okay, maybe for good reason. Uh, maybe they were worried about smoking in Thailand. Yeah? It was a health issue. But uh, their reaction was, okay, we are going to make life miserable for Philip Morris. <laughs> you cannot do that. Yeah? Uh, you, you can take health measures or whatever, but you cannot make the life of a company miserable because you want to fight uh, smoking. And, and, and you choose only one foreign manufacturer. Right? You don't go after your own tobacco manufacturers. Okay, what, what they did is they rejected transaction value automatically, and instead they applied some type of deductive value. You know that deductive value is based on the price in a sale in your domestic market. And on that price, you discount the commission of the importer, uh, transport costs within the importing territory, and the taxes paid on importation. So they were applying some type of deductive value method, but even, okay, it, it was not even the deductive value method because they were acting somewhat arbitrarily. And, and the panel and the appellate body agreed that this behavior of the Thailand customs was in breach of the customs valuation agreement. You cannot reject uh, transaction value without providing appropriate, adequate reasons to the declarant. You must motivate your departure from transaction value. Motivation. And there is another interesting discussion in this case about what is the role of customs authorities in checking, in controlling the customs value. And the discussion is that the panel found that in the customs valuation rules, in the customs valuation agreement, it, it, it says that the customs authorities must examine, the customs authorities must examine the information available. And, and the panel found that the meaning of examining this context is aching, is very similar to investigate. Examine, one of the meanings of examine is close to investigate. And the panel found that the authorities cannot take a passive role, saying, bring me documents, bring me evidence. You have to convince me. No. The authorities also have a responsibility of finding out the facts. They cannot simply take a passive role. And in the Euro 2004 case, 
what the European Court of Justice is saying to the customs authorities is, yes, you can stay on your seats and you can ask the importer whatever documents you want. The invoice is not enough. The, the bank certificate is not enough. The accounting records are not enough. What is enough? <laughs> you can keep asking for more. But they never stop to say, and you should also do this and this and this. You should, for example, ask the sporting country for the export declaration. Now with the trade facilitation agreement, uh, members of the WTO are bound to, to, to provide the export declaration. Customs could have tried to find out the customs declaration of export to check if what they said at the exporting country and what they are saying in, in the EU is consistent. They could also check other financial institutions to find out if there were additional payments. Maybe they were paying part of the amount through another bank account or through another means. Try to find out if they are transferring money abroad by other means. They could have also checked the corporate income tax. Are they declaring their profits in a manner which is consistent with the custom value they are reporting? I mean, there are many things we could expect from the authorities to do that they didn't. <laughs> and uh, as a European citizen, I don't want my customs authorities to be like that, to be simply passive. Uh, bring me, bring me documents, bring me. I, I'm not convinced. I, I reject, no. I want customs authorities that engage, who are active, who take a role in finding out whether the declarant is reporting the actual price or not, if they are cheating or not. And in this regard, we don't have the, the Spanish customs representative, I think. In this regard, I right here, Felipe. Okay, I'm going to say something very good about the Spanish customs. The Spanish customs, some, uh, okay, we have cases from time to time, eh? but one of the big cases uh, uh, was where the, the importers, it was a Chinese, uh, uh, it was a Chinese group, they were importing a lot of goods and they were declaring absurd prices. But because they have all the documents right, customs can only, can, could only do so much. If they have all the supporting documents, you cannot attack the transaction value. But what customs did was to refer the case to the police. These people are cheating, obviously, because the prices they are declaring cannot be true. And the police did their job. The police found that they were moving cash. The police found that they were engaging with other criminals. And in the end, they went so far as to discover that a Chinese bank a Chinese public bank had opened a subsidiary in Madrid only to launder the money from this gap. It was such a huge enterprise that they managed to have a subsidiary of a Chinese bank open in Madrid to launder their money. They were, they were laundering money not only from smuggling, they were laundering money from uh, falsification of works of art, uh, traffic with human people, prostitution, uh, whatever. I mean, all the, all the crimes in the criminal code. And the police discovered this. And the, the Chinese bank's uh, uh, branch was forced to close because of this investigation. And some of the members of this criminal gang were put in jail. Uh, the leader was escaped because I suspect because of, of the influence, I don't know, but maybe because of the influence of the Chinese government. I mean, the, the enterprise was so big. And he was, giving, he was given a, a, a permit to, to leave uh, the jail, and he never returned. But OK, I think it is much better to take this attitude that, OK, we as customs, this is as far as we can go. And now this is a problem for the police. And the police do their job. And you get rid of criminals in a proper way. And you don't need, you don't need to manipulate. You don't need to be arbitrary on customs valuation. And because of this, we got rid of a gang of criminals. 
with this approach of the Hungarian authorities, you don't get rid of the criminals. You, you have these people, and you impose on them an arbitrary decision, but you don't, you don't uh, get rid of them. They will try to do that in another country or with another product or in another manner. By the way, in this case I'm telling you, uh, the, the main Spanish newspaper ran an opinion article saying, among other things, uh, good for the Spanish police, but what a shame of the Spanish customs. Because for so long, how, how they did never find out that they were introducing goods declaring an absurd price. And it, it's a pity because no, <laughs> it, was, it was great for the police and great for customs because what both were doing their job and they were doing their job correctly. In my opinion, customs cannot go that far as to deny transaction value based only on the fact that the price is very low. Customs needs to provide something else. And in some cases, you cannot provide something else because the, the criminals are so well organized. So this would be my opinion on this. And with that, uh, thank you for your attention. And just, just one point. The, 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 the position of the European Court of Justice from a, from a trade policy perspective I think it's also very negative. Because the message we are sending abroad is imagine other countries learn that in Europe you can be rejected transaction value simply because your price is very low. Imagine what they can do in the US, in Colombia, in Ar Argentina, in China, in the, I mean, anywhere with Spanish, with, with the Spanish or European exporters. They could do the same thing to us. They could say, okay, you reject transaction value with no grounds. So we are going to do the same to you. Right? When, when European exporters try to sell products abroad, here we have some Germans, <laughs> your Mercedes cars, your, B, your BMWs, we are going to reject transaction value. And I am sure we will not like that. We will not like that. So if you want to be respected, you also have to respect. Right? You have to play by the rules. And in my opinion, the European Court of Justice in this case did not take the, the, the best approach. Okay, now, yes. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>